Hey, welcome back to the Carp Angler Chronicles podcast. A little bit of a special episode for you today. Um, you will be leading into a piece where I'm actually on the bank. As I record this right now, I'm back home. I'm just recording this intro for you, but I fished uh, one of my new waters um, and I was out fishing at the time of recording and Pete was at home. So there's a little little bits and, and bobs about the water that I'm fishing and, and how I'm fishing, um, but a lot of what we're covering today is bait. Now, many of you have been asking us for a, a, a sole bait episode where we dive into the nitty gritty of bait. Now, this podcast was recorded kind of, well, off the cuff as always, but it was not planned. Um, I was literally speaking to Pete on the phone. I was like, do you know what? Should we just record one now? So we did. So we haven't actually planned any structured bait chat. Um, we just kind of start chatting about and bait and see what comes up. Um, there's some great jewels of information in here. Um, so we, we hope you enjoy that. In the same respect, please let us know what you want us to cover in future ep episodes. Many of you message us um, on Instagram and ask, you know, are you going to do a, a debate episode you keep mentioning? And can you include this, that and the other? That's great. We want to know what it is you want to listen to rather than us just kind of getting uh, guessing what you want to listen to. It's great to hear what you actually want. So with that in mind, please reach out, give us a message. Uh, Instagram is probably the best I see to Instagram Pete sees to Facebook and he's not on Facebook very much so Instagram is is the one to message us on and uh, yeah let us know what it is you want to listen to as well as that we would be massively grateful if you could just take 60 seconds out and go over to the Apple podcast app and leave us a review. It's great to see how we're doing. It's great to hear some feedback from you. Um, obviously, we don't want to be making these podcasts if no one's listening and no one's enjoying it. So if you could just leave us a review, it massively helps our podcast get out there. And it really, really does help keep us going with it. So if you could do that, it would be much appreciated. So with all that said, we'll lead into the podcast. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you maybe even learn a, a thing or two about it and um, enjoy. Oh my god, someone has just had a fucking belter across the pond, <laughs> across the lake. I could just hear it melting oh, off. Oh, really? Did you hear no. It? Yeah, you probably couldn't. I could hear it faintly. It's a big old water, but yeah. Oh, nice. That's exciting, mm. isn't it? Well, it's for them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're not confident? No, I'm not confident, mate. I'm not confident at all. Um, for a start, I'm not. For a start, it's a first. We might as well lead in with the listeners now. Welcome, yeah. <laughs> welcome to the Carp Angler Chronicles podcast. But you no, know, I mean it's for a start. It's my first first time on the water. Um, it's a big old bit of water, way over a hundred acres, um, and I'm not really in the spot I want to be in. Um, the spot I wanted, or the area I wanted, the area I ideally want to be in, there's no fishing on. So there's only fishing allowed from a certain, two certain parts of the lake, which is a bit of a bugger, to be honest, for obvious reasons. So I'm not in the area I'd want to be anyway. Um, but out of the areas that you're allowed to angle in, I'm not in the area I want to be either. So uh, it's one of them. Um, I don't really know the spots here. I spent a good amount of time uh, leading around. I was most of the afternoon actually I'm um, doing that hours and hours and uh, yeah I found some some okay bits um, but no to answer your question man I'm just not confident uh, I'm not nah just not feeling it to be honest plus a little bit of a uh, heads up for the listener actually I'm like I'm next to the dividing line where it's like uh, anglers only and it's public access um, so you can probably hear some some teenagers in the background um, getting boozed up <laughs> so apologies about that if it if it comes out on the mic um, it's obviously that's going on as well so no mate not 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 super confident but nonetheless it's nice to be out after a very long lockdown isn't it yeah no I'm excited for you um, and, and what's your tipple Sam what are you having tonight on the bank oh I haven't even I've literally just sat down it's as we record this it is 9 23 and I've literally only just sat down from getting all my rods sorted. Um, I haven't even had one yet, but I've just reached in 
I've got a cooler. Uh, I mean, I'm not usually that poncy, but I thought, sod it, I'm going to take some nice cold beers. Um, <laughs> I just assumed got... that was for your bait. I saw that on our video chat. I was a bit like, oh, that's his bait <laughs> vessel. <laughs> Oh no, mate! I got another. I got two other buckets for the bait. No, it's um. No, I just thought. You know what? It's first time I've done a night for a long time. What with lockdown, so I'll uh, I just take some nice cold beers rather than warm beers. Um. Anyway, my tipple. I've reached in. I've got a nice San Miguel. Um, bottle of San Miguel. Once that is gone, I've got a bottle of as the Japanese acai. Acai. Okay. Acai. Acai. <laughs> Something like that. And then I've got some Amstel, a couple of Amstel cans, if I if I want another. So yeah, how about you, Pete? Um, I want a I want a lager as well, mate. Uh, I can't pronounce it; it's Italian. The Bira Bira Moretti. I think you know it, don't you? Oh yeah, Moretti. Yeah, decent. Yeah. I enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. It's lager weather, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's so freaking hot. Mm. I've I've. I've been balding for a while. <laughs> like really loot like I've had a receding hairline. Probably as long as you've known me, isn't it, yeah. Pete? Um but it's just it's getting too much now, so I've just shaved my whole head off. Um just because like I'm fighting a losing battle, trying to make my hair look thick and everything. Um but yeah, I got really burnt on my head. And I, I like now I have to be a hat person, like, otherwise I really suffer when I'm out in the sun because of the heat on my head. I'm not used to it. Um, but yeah, there we go. Yeah, it has been really hot, really hot. Yeah, I think yesterday you were saying it was scorching as well. Um, so it's not ideal for fishing, I guess. Uh, it's been hot down here today. I was walking back from the shop actually, so I just popped to the shop to get my beers, and um, I just couldn't believe how warm it was. So it's, it's sort of well, nearly nine o'clock. It's sort of getting a little bit sort of uh, like twilight now, and uh, yeah, lovely and warm. And I was walking back home and. Do you know what? I've just cut my hedge and it was looking lovely. And I was like, all oh, like loving summer life. And then I realized that actually we've lost so much summer. It's only next month that the uh, the clocks, <laughs> where it starts getting darker in the evenings, you know? Oh, don't. That's horrible. It's madness, isn't it? But it doesn't feel like it. It, should, it still should still be like March, April, but we've lost so much time. Kind of feels, yeah, I know what you mean. I think that's because of like your timeline compass is somewhat to do with angling if you know what i mean mm -hmm. so it's like spring and then you know you see the first bit of blossom maybe on the blackthorn or what have you um and then it's like that that's your timeline isn't it but <clears throat> because we've not been able to get out on the bank and fish i think it seems like we've just kind of cut a few months out of our year and they've just melted into nothing uh so it feels for me anyway yeah exactly um, mm. so this is your first your first night on the new water. Mm. Are, you, are you not feeling the water? Is it just sort of like your swim or just your, your lack of preparation? What is it? Um, I wouldn't say it's my lack of preparation. How dare you? <laughs> um, no, I'm joking. Um, no, I mean, I've worked hard today to, like I really have. I feel like I've had a freaking workout. Um, I don't think it's lack of preparation. No, I mean, I'm not confident because the weather isn't great for it. Um, I'm not in the area I want to be. Um, there's no real areas out there that I'm just like, yeah, I'm very confident in that. Um, it's absolutely smothered in craze, which I've fished waters with craze before, but I mean, this is supposed to be next level. Um, and I wouldn't say I'm, you know, I haven't done that much time in waters where there's been real serious crayfish issues so that's kind of new territory for me I, I know what i'm doing with it but it's kind of new territory um i don't know it's just a lot of different things as to why i'm i'm just not confident in getting a bite this evening plus the fact there's not that many fish in there i mean like, let's, let's point this out it's it's by no means of water that you would just come and expect to have one out every time uh far from it as far as i'm told it's uh it's a hard water um speaking to a guy that's just done his second night uh, and he's not had anything yet um so obviously those most of those nights were done uh, last year in autumn actually mm -hmm. 
but he wasn't he wasn't fishing during lockdown just before anyone moans about that um so yeah it's by no means an easy water anyway but i'll be honest with you it's some waters captivate you don't they and you're just like oh that like that i just want to be there all the time and get my teeth into it get some spots going this just does not do it for me i mean there's some lovely fish in here um it's a nice big old bit of water which i i, I like but it's I don't know, it's probably not my kind of angling, if truth be told. Um, yeah, you know what it's like, don't you, Pete? Like, some waters, they just captivate you. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just like, yeah, that, that's, that's you know, you just um, get immersed in it. And, I mean, it's early days, yeah, I just can't see me getting immersed in this place. Um, so, yeah, it's, I'll probably be... Yeah. Uh, it's one of those things, mate, you know, if you, if you sort of um, had a fish out tonight, or a couple out, I think it would probably um, start to tweak your interest a little bit more, don't you think? Um, no, because then I'd think it would be too easy. <laughs> it wouldn't be a challenge. I'd just be like, yeah, I like to work for my fish. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. Of course, I would like to catch one tonight. Uh, obviously, I would. But I don't think it would shift things for me, <clears throat> uh, to be honest with you. But who knows? Who knows, mate? I, I mean, early days... Um, the ticket was 350 quid, so it didn't, you know, it's enough, don't get me wrong, but it didn't break the bank. Um, so I guess, I, I don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a while and then I'll, I'll maybe move on to pastures new. See how I go. Yeah, and what, what's your, how long, when did your ticket start? Um, it started, I bought it like a week before lockdown started, it was, no it wasn't, a couple of weeks before lockdown started, I've never, didn't get to fish it basically, yeah. so um, I don't know, mid-March it ends, March, the ticket doesn't run from a date, the ticket just runs from whenever you buy it, Okay. Mm. Uh, which is quite good, um, I don't know whether they're going to give any extension for the closed period, I mean it's, it's not their fault, it's not something I'd ask for to be honest. But if they're offering it, I'll take it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, it's not the kind so, of water yeah. you're going to sort of target through the winter either, is it? Uh, generally, no. It would be a resounding no. I mean, I've, I walked it quite a bit in the in the winter. Uh, probably shouldn't have. Uh, there's a lot of the bank you're actually allowed to go to. A lot of it you're not. But anyway, I, I, I've had a stroll around in the winter and that. No one ever fishes it. Um, now, to be honest, I don't know. It does, that doesn't necessarily mean that it won't do winter bites, um, but it's a huge water. You know, you got to really find them. It's hard enough finding them in the winter. Um, generally, I like smaller lakes in the winter, to be honest. It's 100, 120 acres, I think. Um, so it's, uh, and some people will work out where it is by, by what we're saying, but it's in the Cotswolds. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's probably, you know, Probably wouldn't be my first choice of winter water, to be honest. So it's pretty much like from now until early winter, I'll do on here if I, it, you know, if I stick it out and and if I don't move on to somewhere else. Yeah, I've uh, I've just been a little bit distracted. I could hear baby screaming. So baby's been down for a few hours, but woken up. So I've had my wife running upstairs and grab her. So if the listeners can hear a howling baby, I apologise. Um, I told you I did my first night back after lockdown, didn't I? So I yeah, was out. Yeah, you did. Tell me about yeah, it. I was out what on happened? Monday night. Nothing <coughs> exciting, to be honest, mate. Um, no, Sunday night, I apologise. I got down to the lake and there was a lot of sort of um, pleasure anglers. It's Sunday afternoon, lovely weather. Everybody's out fresh after lockdown, so uh, it was pretty busy. So I just sort of um, I just had a good walk around and I waited for lots of people to clear off home before I. Uh, chose my swim i just tucked myself away from other anglers to be honest i mean there was only it's a 12 12 acre lake and there was four four people on overnight so um everybody was sort of on one side of the lake i decided to move myself away from the pressure uh it's a swim where i'd had a fish out of previously uh, so i knew a couple of little spots and things um but yeah i had a resounding blank uh, and if i'm honest with you i saw i did see fish showing um on the opposite side of the lake just as it was getting dark and I considered making a move but like I said to you before I'd have plotted myself up between a couple of other anglers and that's just not how I like to fish if I'm honest I like my own sort of space and 
I don't know, I'm not a, I'm not a catch at all costs kind of guy. Um, I'm sure it would have pissed <coughs> the other guys off if I'd have uh, just dropped in between them as well. So it's not my style. Um, but I think I've um, found a little area of the lake I'm going to target. Um, I found a couple of swims that just don't get fished a lot. Uh, and my goal is now is just to just to bait heavy. At the moment, I can get down there pretty much most days to walk the dog. I can take the kids to walk around. Um, if needs be, it's all sort of like public access uh, where it is. So, so that's the plan. I'm just going to bait a few areas and um, yeah, try and fish as much as I can. But that's it, really. Uh, nothing, nothing too exciting. Uh, now then, dude, on the last podcast, you, well, the last one we did together, um, there's been a few since then, hasn't there? Uh, where we've had a few <coughs> guests on. I guess we'll have a little chat about that uh, in a bit. Um, yeah. But you sprung it on me where I had to guess the flavour. Oh. Now I've had to play yeah. the guess the flavour game, so I've dug out some old bait making stuff. Uh, and I've got these old flavours. And it's almost like something has just eaten the labels off the bottles. It's just <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. So I've had to guess the flavour as well. Um, but so I've got a flavour in my hand. Got to guess it. Three guesses. Uh, gr- green zinc. No. Black currant. Nope. Uh. Ooh, I'm trying to think what you used to use. I'll give you a clue. I never uh, really used it. Go on. <clears throat> oh, well, that doesn't, yeah. that doesn't help it's at all. Been, well, uh, half, half a bottle's gone, but I never recall using it, if I'm honest. It's Richworth. Richworth. Uh, Tutti? No, we, I thought it was Tutti. But I've been <clears> sniffing, <throat> and I don't think it is. The label's gone, mate. All I can see is the Richworth and the double strength. But yeah. You don't think You don't think it no, is? I'm pretty sure it's S. You may- it's Esterberry. I'm sure of it. Oh yeah, mate. You you know it. You'd know if it was uh, tutti yeah, or no, not. You'd know if it's Esterberry. <laughs> they're quite distinctive, aren't they? Yeah, they're both obviously sort of fruity flavours. If it was, I used to like my Esterberry. Mm. Yeah, I used to like that. <clears throat> mate, that might have been my bottle. Did I, I gave you some stuff, didn't I? When I moved up. Yeah, I don't know. No, you gave me some soda flavours, mate. I remember it. I haven't, I haven't got them. I was looking for them. I thought, oh, I'll be in here. Because I remember you gave me some... Was it Esther Blend 12? Esther Blend 12. Uh, black and Blue I used to use as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Winter Secret, of course. Love Winter Secret. Yeah, I got some more of that. Did I tell you? I think you did, yeah. You mentioned it. Um, so I've got a couple of bottles of this. Well, Richworth bottles as well. Pink label, white top. Yeah. Um, so it's the oil, mate, and it's that... Um, we spoke about it on the pod once that old mackerel oil can you remember yes of course I don't know if Richworth still do it but it still stinks Mm. Richworth have changed haven't they they've changed hands and all that stuff it's a lot of the old flavours just aren't aren't the same unfortunately no Um, but that's just time moves on doesn't it I guess mm. Um, I'm sure there's some modern day classics mate that we're sort of yet to find and you know what I mean 100% 100% yeah um, dude so this yeah. next one is another oil It's we spoke about <clears> this before and you can't remember it so we sort of um, mm. when we seriously got into our bait making um, and we sort of clubbed together didn't we and we bought a lot of the equipment together like the compressor yeah. and the pneumatic gun and all the rest of it um, and we used to call our bait the Marle can you remember that? Yep. Yeah, I've got, anyway, I've got a bottle of the uh, Marley Spice. Marley Super Spice. Sense Oil Palatant by Nash. Yeah, that was good stuff. It really yeah. was, actually, wasn't it? And um... <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> the strawberry one is... I, I like the strawberry palatant and the tangerine palatant as well. I think they still do the strawberry, mate. Mm, yeah. wonder if it's the same. It's, it's in a different bottle. I think it's relabeled as something else, but... Um... I think they do. They certainly, I haven't seen the the, the Marley Spice anyway. Ah, oh, but mate, smelling that just brings back memories. Actually, it used to make me feel rank when we used to be like mixing it up with the eggs and stuff. It's really overpowering. Was it Was it actually Marley? Was, did they call it Marley Spice or did they call it Malaysian Spice? Well, it's, I'm guessing it would have been Malaysian, but it's just M-A-L-A-Y Spice. Okay. We used to call okay. it Marley. It didn't. They did the Indian spice as well, didn't they? I 
Yeah, it rings a bell, but I'm not sure, mate. I wouldn't want to say with confidence. Um, yeah. Mate, I'm just loving it. <laughs> um, I've got a bottle of what must be, I think it's like the old Nash, um, like pro taste, like the sweetener. Um, it's just super sweet to smell. I don't really know what it is. Uh, and then my last little one to take us down memory lane was, I'm delighted I found this as well, like an old bottle of um, Nutribates uh, black pepper essential oil. Uh, yeah. She's got about yeah. a third left in it, I guess. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. That's good stuff. <clears throat> I used to get the uh, Premier Bates one. That was good. Mm, so I think um, yeah, essential oils are really hit and miss, aren't they? They're either one end of the scale or they're just absolute turd. You, you, you need to get a good one. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You, you do need to get, get a good one. Um, I remember speaking to Ser Do you remember Serenity off the forum? Cart forum? Yeah, I remember the name, yeah. Alan? Alan? Yeah. He, he, he knew, oh man, his bait knowledge was next level. And, uh, he had some, some interesting stuff to say about essential oils. I, I do. Um, he had an air of mystique about him, actually. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Of course like, he does. He, Weirdly, was a fountain of knowledge for all things bait. I think he'd been mm -hmm. around a block many times, but um, never refused to use boilie, didn't he, in the end? Remember that? He wouldn't use rolled yeah, bait. Yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it, well, it's just because it has the arse boiled out of it and it's locked up with an egg, you know. Well, he would never... I understand yeah, that. He would never explain why, though. He always used to say, like, well, like, nature, follow nature. That used to be his sort of thing. <laughs> I think, so I'll have to dig out the PMs, but I mean, he was actually, he was quite, he, he wasn't very forthcoming with information, was he? <laughs> He'd drop some nuggets and that was it, but he, he was really kind to me and uh, on one occasion and, you know, we, we kind of sort of wrote to each other a little bit and uh, he, I um, can't remember where I was going with that now, but yeah, he, he did divulge quite a bit of information. I think where the whole follow nature thing comes from I think um, is I get the impression he thought what people do with a boilie is they just ram a load of different you know attractive stuff for a carp all in one bait without really thinking of it as a complete product if that makes sense yeah it, I remember sort of formulating recipes and you can just go to, you know things at work, and then all of a sudden you've got, you're making sort of like a little bit, so you can get a little bit of this in, a little bit of that, do you mm. know what I mean? Like some betaine, you want to get in there, and then you want to get a little bit of something else in. And I think you just got to sort of strip it back and actually sort of think about like, what what do you want to sort of get from this? <clears throat> um. Yeah, 100%. So I'm doing hook baits at the minute. I'm going mad on hook baits. <laughs> I've seen a few... And, uh, um, stories on yeah. facebook and insta are you are you rolling these hook baits mate or are these sort of shop bought and you're just sort of doing your own thing oh, no 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 i'm rolling them i'm rolling them up yeah rolling them up and uh yeah <clears throat> I'm, I'm doing i'm doing the same uh, well i'm in in the same kind of vein of just not being tempted by oh well, i like this and i like that and they go well together and just banging a load of stuff in it I'm really kind of um, stripping it back um, to much more, I wouldn't say basic things, but things, I'll, I'll give you an example, I like spices, um, I love spices in bait, mm -hmm. real big fan of spices, um, sure you are as well Pete. Um, so for example, um, let's take essential oils, right, when you're using an essential oil, I think that's like fantastic. But I think you got a lot more mileage in it if you would say, let's say you're using a clove essential oil. If you can get also get a clove oleo resin, and then somehow get small doses. This is of some kind of um, powdered clove within that bait. You're making it a more well-rounded thing, as it would be in nature. Going back to what Serenity would would talk about. 
as it would be in nature, right? It would have all of those things because what we've done is we've got, we've taken a clove and we've split it down, right? Into essential oil, into an oleo resin uh, and it's powder. So we, we've kind of fractionated it, if that makes sense. So we're almost putting it back together. Now that would seem odd. It's like we'll put the whole Use a clove. thing in. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't work like saying. that, does it? No. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't work like that at all. So I'm trying to explain it. Um, it's hard to explain. So I guess it's very complex in that manner. But yeah, it's more simple because it's not like I'm adding clove, black pepper, uh, GLM, betaine, freaking some kind of powdered palatant. Right? It's not like I'm adding loads of different stuff, like piling a load of good stuff together and hoping it is awesome. Um, does that make sense, mate? Yeah, I, I understand. Uh, so, so these hook baits, you're, what's what's the idea of these hook baits? I mean, are you using them like for practicality, like you're talking about your, your crayfish, are you hardening them up, are you using them for this water that you're on now? Um, or are you oh, doing it oh. for a different dimension of attraction? Hell no. I have got one out <laughs> at the minute, um, just purely out of interest, mm -hmm. see what would happen. They won't, it, it won't withstand um, uh, uh, the attention of a crayfish, mate. Uh, for that, it's, you got, you pretty much got to have plastic or ideally wooden balls um, s yeah, soaked in some kind of liquid. And fish them as pop-ups. The more you soak them, obviously, they become less buoyant. Um, but no, it's, it, wooden balls is the way to go with it. Uh, I'm, I'm, ex I'm experimenting with something else as well. Uh, everyone's gonna hate this, but I, I don't want to talk about that. Uh, but I've got a really exciting idea for the for this crayfish water. Um, so I'm experimenting with that and seeing if it'll work. I know that'll piss people off. That's a side note, actually. But do you know the amount of messages we get? Like, love the podcast, fantastic. Just wish you'd stop the secret squirrel stuff. <laughs> like, it really <laughs> pisses people off. Uh, and I can understand why. It's probably really frustrating to listen to. But you have to understand, we don't, like, we're out here fishing waters. We don't want to be super open and like, oh, yeah, I'm doing X, Y, Z. Because, for example, let's say I start catching well on here. Like, if other people, okay, listen to it and they know exactly what I'm doing. You just, you wouldn't do that, would you, on your water? Like, you, the listener, this is. If you had some going really good and you were freaking, you know, you, you, you were catching well and it was really working for you, would you go and, like, broadcast that to everyone? Some of you might, and, and you're probably better men than me, or women. Um, but I wouldn't. I want to keep it to myself and, and get the mileage out of it and then maybe share it. Um, bit, of a, bit of a tangent, bit of a side note, but uh, yeah, there we go. Um, so anyway, sorry, Pete, to answer your question, buddy, um, no, I mean, I wouldn't use them on, on somewhere where it was, I mean, this place is supposed to be super infested, next level with craze. Uh, so uh, no, I wouldn't, wouldn't use them on here. Um, but uh, was that your question? Was there another question? <clears throat> yeah, I was just, I was asking like, was <laughs> the question was, would you use them on that water? You've just said no, but you are using one. <laughs> um, and it was like, are you making them like harder for your water, or is you doing it? So you spoke about clove. Were you just using that as example? Is that something you're doing on these hook baits? Oh, th there's no clove in there, uh, okay. <clears throat> and that's not that. That's not me being secret squirrel. That there, there is no clove in there. And in fact, I'll give you a fantastic clove recipe in in a little bit, uh, in a moment, if you want. Um, but no, I mean, yeah, I am using one on here just to see what a crayfish would do to it. Because uh, they are very hard, actually. Mm -hmm. they, they are hard. Um, they like so basically they go through through a curing process. Um, I'm also messing with enzymes. It's quite complicated what what I'm doing with it. Um, but I'm adding like a cure over time. Um, I'm not. I haven't decided on how many times I would cure it. So like dry oh, it out, right. add a add a, add a new top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's 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 been done before. I'm not like the first no. person to do this. Yeah. Um, so they're quite hard anyway, mate, to be honest. Uh, they, they, they are pretty hard. Um, and I like, yeah, I, I, I like to use cork. Um, so they're, they're pretty hard anyway, mate, to be honest with you. I mean, they could definitely withstand birds. Like, I, just would, I would not be worried about birds picking them up. Um, Sorry, you said you like to use cork. You're using like, a cork ball, like, at least pop-ups, or are you using a bit of cork dust to make your, waf Both. your wafter? I've got some. Well, I've got I, I've got some cork ball 
baits and I've got um, cork dust. Oh, nice. You've, uh, hey, you've been busy. Cork chunks. You've been busy. Oh, I'm busy. I'm a busy boy. Mm. I am a busy boy. Mm. You're putting me to shame, mate. I am. Honestly, I did my night. I was just so excited to be out for a night and go fishing. I just mm. can't tell you how woefully unprepared I was. I've had the last sort of eight weeks of not doing anything. And um, I've just done nothing for my fishing gear. Absolutely nothing. I wasn't prepared. I mean, I don't even own any bait, really. I had to whip around to a mate's and grab like half a kilo of bait off of him. Um, which he had out in his garage. <laughs> it's like, it's that bad. And I've still not bought any bait. Um, I've actually got some maize soaking. I'm going to be baiting up with maize um, in a few spots. Yeah, just terrible. Really lazy. Hmm. Yeah, you've been busy. I've been busy. You, you were talking before about your bait and you need to get some bait. Are you going to roll it or are you going to buy it? I'll tell you where I'm at. It, I, I'm... I'm Loving messing with the hook baits, but I'm I do not have the time nor the want to be starting to roll You know feed bait. I just I just don't know. No, this is not for me. I I sent you that link didn't I on Facebook? Yeah, mate. That is a bargain Pete sent me this like Pete sent me a link to someone that's selling like everything you'd need to get back into bait making or into bait making a compressor rolling tables all stuff that we had before uh, but no, I'm not buying it, mate. I'm not doing it, honestly. Uh, They've even e included in that was like a proper Kenwood Chef mixer. Some sort of like, I think even like a Burko was included. There was like five different like gardener tables. Were they Shillam tables? I don't know. And um, mate, it's like 250 quid for a compressor, a gun, everything. It's unbelievable. Bargain. Hey, I, I had a Kenwood in my kitchen. Um, but do you remember the, uh, <laughs> do you remember the industrial drill attachment? That we used to mix ba right. base mix with. You remember that? What were you? Yeah, what we bought. Yeah. That, yeah, burnt that out a few times, mate. The guy in the <laughs> shop used to get really annoyed. <laughs> he used to take it back like it's under warranty, mate. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. We had this huge freaking drill, like real bits of bit of bit of kit, wasn't it? And this um this what was it for mixing plaster or something? It was just like this long yeah, shaft like with the with the the twirl on the end probably doesn't Mate, sound very technical but right. back at the, the back then as well like we were both pretty hard up for cash weren't we like everything was yeah beg borrowed and stolen oh yeah and this this was like a, a lower it was a big plasterous whisk but it was probably like a like a cheap version sort of like um yeah it was on the low end of the scale uh, and it just kept the motor kept burning out on us didn't it that was because mate you used to like your mixes so freaking stiff <laughs> <laughs> you used to wind me up mate. You used to the, hate like, it, everything you? would struggle yeah you used to wind me up <laughs> like something chronic like it would take us so long to roll like a batch of your bait and then mine i'd just bait the mix like a little bit wetter <laughs> it would just fly out yeah done in no time <laughs> Pete, for those listeners that don't know Pete, he is like, he's the most chill guy ever, but he gets real arsy and antsy about certain things. That That's that's one of them. He's, he's so laid back if you ever meet him. But some things just really, really piss him off, yeah. don't they? That pissed me off yeah. big time. Yeah. I just knew every time you had such an issue about having, like, you just didn't want, as, you wanted as little egg in the mix as possible. Exactly, yeah. <clears throat> I, I understand the reasons for it, but... It was always me who was sort of like on the table rolling it. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> I, I was, I'm pretty sure I did the harder work. <laughs> it used to piss me off. I think I was just on the drill and I just burning out the drill. That was my job. <laughs> Probably. Um, there, I mean, a lot of companies are now not using egg. And I'll be honest. No. I'll be honest. Um, excuse me, I'm getting a bit gassy from this beer. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what they're. That's the side of bait making I'm not up to date with. I'm just, I'm just not up to date with that stuff. Um, but there's a few. So Baitworks is is bringing out. They're bringing out a, a new bait, uh, Cremino. You can get it if you're local, I think. But they're like officially launching it like any time now. Might even be launched by the time we, you know publish this podcast that that doesn't have any egg in it there's another bait company i think there's quite there's probably quite a few bait companies that are doing it now so there's no egg in it now what they're using i don't know i'm sure it's common knowledge for a lot of people i'm sure i could find out whether it's any better or not i don't know but that's quite interesting i think mm, yeah i mean there were certain binders and stuff you could buy 
uh, before. I'm trying to think of the names of them, like Xanthum Gum or whatever it was. Yeah. Stuff like that. I don't, I don't know. I think a lot of companies who, who don't use eggs, um, they don't use raw egg, but they'll certainly use some like egg powder in there. Yeah. And use some liquids to, do you know what I mean? <clears throat> um, but I don't know. Like you're saying, I'm so sort of like six or seven years since I've last sort of really gone into bait heavily. Mm. Um, I'm just out of the loop a little bit. Um, something was after we we had the um, the chat with Sean Harrison, and he was talking a lot about essential oils. Um, I, if, before that chat, um, I know you'd sort of were re going down the essential oil route, and um, it reminded me. I don't know if you remember this bait I made. It was it was a winter bait, and it was just like a pure attractor bait, um, and that was with the. Um, the black pepper, but I also use it with a lime essential oil. Can you remember that? Uh, yeah, I can remember you being into lime. Um, do you remember I bought a load of Live System special rolled with lime oil? Do you remember that? Yeah, no, uh, maybe. I don't know. I've just got a vision of... I had some CC Moore lime pop-ups once. I don't know if I'm confusing it with that. No. No, mate. No, this is a special order. Anyway, yeah, I like lime. Um, it, I, I rate that stuff. Anyway, go on. Yeah, I do remember. Yeah, it was just that was. I've I've been um, seriously considering sort of. I've I've been considering rolling bait, um, but I just don't want to roll the fish meal bait. I don't want the stinky ingredients in the house. I don't want them in the shed. I don't want the hassle at the moment. Mm. So I was thinking of like a little winter bait I could make, maybe um, it's like a little attractor. Ooh. Mm. Um, yeah, can you remember as well? I used to, I used well, I I certainly used to use it all the time. Anyway, it was EMP bird food. Mm -hmm. um, I used to like my EMP. Do you know what the funny thing is? On a lie for me the other night, I couldn't remember the name of it. Um, I spent the internet like scouring different bird feeds, like crushed bird feed, <laughs> um, so I could find it again. But yeah, it's just an egg biscuit bird food, isn't it? Yeah. Um, much like a, a CLO or something, but I used to—I don't know why I used to prefer it. It's a lot more expensive, um, but it was a lot more coarse. I think it, you could get a lot more sort of a, it leaks a lot more attraction. Yeah, uh, from the bait. What? Um, it was—it was quite unique. I had like quite a few. I don't know what it was like. The, whether it was the egg biscuit, I don't know, but like the orange flecks in it. I don't know if you can remember. Mm. Yeah, uh, I have no idea what that was. Yeah, no, I do, mate. So what you want to roll a winter bait? Did you say why a winter bait? I don't know. I just want to roll like a bird food bait. I don't want to roll a, a like you're saying. I haven't got the time, mate, to be rolling kilo after kilo. So I don't know. I was just thinking of rolling something sort of like higher tracked, sort of winter bait, something that they're not going to use as like a food source. Just yeah, you know, just play around with some things. Um, I need to find some lime essential oil because that did really well. I think I used it with sort of like a creamy flavour as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and I remember I used it with betaine, uh, and it was just literally like maize meal. It was maize meal. Was it soy? It might have been like a, that, that soy um, flour with the like the vanilla. They used to call it like a vanilla meal, but it was just soy yeah. wasn't it? with like a yes. vanilla pods or whatever in it. <clears throat> Um, and then it was like 20% vitamilo with a little bit of betaine. Like real simple uh, mix. Mm. I don't know, I've just got fond memories, mate. Really fond memories. Um, tell you a good winter mix, and I I said I'd tell some people a mix. Um, I don't, I, annoyingly, I don't think it's the same stuff now. But Nutribates, um, mm -hmm. if it's the same stuff, then, then try this. Um, Guava um, Nutrafruit, their flavors. They called them Nutrafruits, I think, didn't they? Anyway, their their yeah. guava uh, flavor um, and the Madagascan clove oil. And I mean, this is nothing like it's not my own thing. Bill uh, Bill Cotton spoke about this quite a lot. That combo is special. Like, there's something about that um, the guava flavor and the Madagascan clove oil. There's something real special about that. Um, and in winter as well, actually, back to Serenity, he put me on to um, cinnamon essential oil. Uh, Casia cinnamon essential oil in the winter as being a real good one. That's definitely got some mileage in it. Um, yeah, I, I definitely feel like there's 
good baits for different seasons. Who was I talking to? Was that Sean that was talking about that on our podcast? Or is that someone else? Sure, about di different baits for different seasons? I think maybe I was talking to someone else. No, no, Sean was very much, um, he wanted one, one bait for... One to rule them all, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, just something they're always going to eat. Mm. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah, that's it. So I was thinking of doing this bait with, um, but maybe putting on on like a mix that was a little bit more, a little bit more digestible. Maybe <coughs> wasn't just sort of like a fifty-fifty mix with some added extras. I'm sure when winter comes around, I'll just sort of resort back to my just fishing singles, <laughs> pop-ups. <laughs> Yeah, I've worked, I've been working on a high track single as well. Uh, to be honest with you, just like a real high track one, something that they would, if it was made into a feed bait, they just wouldn't eat it. <laughs> but uh, I'm quite interested in seeing how it will do in cold water, um, because the, mm. certain uh, ingredients additives will work differently in cold water for sure. Um, and I think. You could even go on and and say that the the carps um, reception, like the chemo receptors, will work different in the cold. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm yeah, so quite. I'm like. Uh, there's a few different things I want to do in the winter, and I'm almost almost like wishing winter to come, so I can try it. Yeah. All. <laughs> That's weird then, because we've been sort of. I guess our brains have been in a similar sort of place. <laughs> yeah, as often was the way, wasn't it? Do you remember? Yeah. We always used to be like, me and Pete used to share a lot. Not women, but uh, I mean, in terms of bait, we used to share a lot. And uh, but, but some things we would keep quiet and we'd get a bit of mileage and then we'd sort of divulge it. And then like probably seven times out of 10, the other person would be like, actually, do you know what? I've, I've been doing the same. It was funny, wasn't it? Yeah. I think as well. I think I think a lot of anglers sort of, I guess, especially if you're like fishing the same sort of waters. Um, I think a lot of guys sort of think the same and go down the same route, and it's all part of that sort of unlocking the puzzle a little bit, isn't it? I don't think that's um, true. I don't think that's true at all. We've, I, I think most anglers don't mess with bait like that. Yeah, very true. We were zoned in though, weren't we? And I think a lot of the time we were sort of reading. Sort of similar stuff, researching similar stuff. Um, Go. Another thing I used to use a lot, I don't know if I ever sort of got into it at the time, was calcium chloride. Yeah, yeah, I remember you talking about that. Um, not some. I dug out some old papers the other day, some old koi papers. Yeah. Um, which I printed off uh, all about calcium chloride. Calcium chloride and. Um, citric acid. Citr oh, uh, I tell you what, citric acid is something I rate. Um, that mm -hmm. that is that's something that um, is is pretty inexpensive, isn't it? I think, um, but very good. Very inexpensive. Yeah. yeah. Very effective. Um, that's something I like. My sort of my, my go to pop ups that I make every year. Um, I've always uh, used a bit of citric acid in there, with a bit of imbuteric. In, um, it's carboxylic, isn't it? Citric acid. But I think when you've got like a different different length chains of the organic acids and stuff. I think citric's quite sort of low. It's one of the first ones. Um, and then I've used, I don't know which different sort of organic acids you've used, mate, but embuteric, I think a lot of people use that, and hexanoic acid as well. Have you used that at all? The hexanoic, that is the uh, caproic, right? <laughs> Tenno, dude, I'm, I'm not a scientist. I believe so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, caproic acid is... I think it's another word for hexanoic acid, maybe. I think you're right, mate. I think I'm right. Uh, yeah, I think I'm right. I wish if we were, if I was recording in my home studio, I'd Google it right now. I think that's it. Yeah, they're carboxylic acids. Um, caproic acid is hexanoic acid. I believe that's the case. I think. Anyway, I think, I think you're right. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I don't even know what we were. <laughs> I don't know where we're going my, on. My, my train of. Uh... I got I got one for you though. Go on. I so you know. Mhm. Mm you love the. There's a lot of clove chat here, isn't there? Mm. <laughs> well, is that? Yeah, mate. Not something I've really used. Clove oil. I so you know. 
I've not used any anything really clove related. It's okay. not it's not just clove related, just just to let you know. Um Dunno why you're saying that. Go on. Well what you you're talking about clove. It's a different it's a different thing. Um, Isn't it from the clove? It, it's it's found in several different things. It's found in ylang ylang as well. Um, it, it's found in. It's a part of the essential oil of plants, if that makes sense. But not just clove. Okay. Yeah, I know it's it, you can you can get it in ylang ylang. Um, I think it's called a. Again, this is like we're gonna. I'm gonna sound like potentially. I'm gonna get this wrong, but I believe it's a phenyl propanoid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is a component of, it's something that's found in essential oils. Uh, and this particular phenyl propanoid, I mean, I'm a believer in it. I think uh, it's very attractive to carp. Again, you've got to get a good one. Like, the, the, it, it's, uh, you, you kind of, to a large degree, you do get what you pay for. Um, feed stimulants, um, the, 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 the manufacturer that were the supplier feed stimulants in Holland, I think they are. They do a good one. Um, been playing with that. I believe that's a good one. It seems identical to a good one I used before. I forgot about them. That's they're a really good supplier if people haven't looked at them before. That's where I get my full fat GLM from. <clears throat> feed stim, isn't it? Feed stimulants, it's called. Is it? Yeah. Um, but they, yeah, I've forgotten about them. That's a, for anybody sort of uh, looking for stuff that's a little bit different as well. It's a really good site. I haven't been on there for years. Yeah, yeah. I imagine they've expanded quite a bit now, if they're still going. It used to be quite small, quite niche, like sort of before. Uh, yeah, they've got quite a bit on the website. A lot of it isn't... Th there's a few bits that are interesting to me. Um and they're, they're, they're good. This good quality stuff, um, in my opinion. Um, British Aquafeed as well. It's like generally I can get most of what I want. Oh, same rod. Yeah, same rod. Hmm. Mm. I just had a beep, folks, for the listeners at home. Left hand rod uh, down the margin. Hmm. Um, no, is that is that one of your homemade footmates? <clears throat> uh, no, it's not. Oh, so that might not be the cray. No, no. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, it's a wooden ball. But uh, I've, I've spotted quite a bit of um, bait over it. So, hmm, we'll see. Um, what were we saying? We were... Well, I don't even know. <laughs> I see Eugenal. Um, I see Eugenal, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, but yeah, that, that's that was it. Uh, feed stimulants and British Aquafeed. I, between those two, you can get a lot of really good quality stuff. Um, in fact, Pete, truth be told, I've got a uh, I've got a, a present for you. Just sat mm -hmm. in my house, waiting, waiting for you, which is from British Aquafeeds. Um, nice. Yeah, I've had it for about two months. Well, it's, yeah. it's out of date. <laughs> no, it's not out of date, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. What is it? you got to spill the beans here, mate. It's a liquid. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's a bulk liquid. That's all I'm saying. Nice. Yeah. Um, so what is it about the, like, you're talking about I say Eugenol. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's attractive to carp in itself? I remember, uh, well, going back many years, I've seen a Frank Warwick video <coughs> talking about ice eugenol, and he was sort of saying that it, he, he was convinced it numbs the fish's mouth, and he was getting much deeper hook holes because they're not sort of they become a lot less riggy. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Personally, <coughs> I took that with a bit of a pinch of salt because I just couldn't see it being the case. Uh, I think I just think uh, you'd use it in such low volume in bait. Mm, I think it's a, it's a chemo chemo reception thing. Um, so like the, the, the smell, if you like, I think it's that, um, I really do. Um, I think, well, I mean it, it, they will be able to taste it. So they they'll have a gustatory, um, what's called a gustatory response to it. But, um, I don't think it's numb in their mouth, mate. I mean, geez, if, how much are you using? <laughs> you know, if you're soaking 
some uh, cork balls in isoeugenol. Maybe it would, but it's also surrounded by water um, mm -hmm. for it to actually, it would need to soak into the skin, break the skin barrier in order for it to numb. And then the hook, uh, I just, nah. A troughing, they have just, to be eaten a lot. <laughs> mm, yeah, I'm not really, I don't know. Don't know, maybe. I mean, who am I to, to argue with Frank Warwick? Um, just doesn't, I don't think that's what's happening. No, I think it's just very attractive to carp, uh, is, is my Having honest that, answer. This is the trouble with it being on a podcast as well, because I'm just chatting to you like I chat to you normally. It might not have been Frank Warwick. I'm just putting it out there. Well, oh, you've said it now, mate. <laughs> I don't. <clears throat> and I'm not editing that out. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Um, so, you're talking about your curing your hook baits, mate. Now, without going into specific specifics mm. of like your ingredients and things, uh, for people that would want to do something similar, uh, I know there's a lot of guys who listen to us who really like a bit of bait talk and they like to take something out of it. How do you go about your process of curing them? It's a big question. How do you cure a bait? Very basically, uh, roll it up with, you know, make your hook bait as you would do you've got your dry ingredients you've got your wet ingredients you're rolling it up you got all the good stuff in there it's good to go it's it you could use it like that right make it like a hook bait that you could just use straight away but if you want to go a step further what you can do is dry out and then you can um create some kind of uh you could call it a paste you could call it a solution you could create something which would be an amalgamation of different attractants a mix of different attractors basically um, or, or, or you know taste ingredients and then apply that to the bait um, as in you know put it on there soak it in there um, not necessarily soak it but get it all moist then dry it out again so you've added a layer of, of um, liquid you know quite uh, my liquid is quite uh, thick and then that kind of dries out it absorbs into the bait right and then dries out and then once it's dried out it's it's hungry for more moisture and then you can put another layer on and another layer on um so yeah does is that what you wanted to know does that make sense yeah i guess so um i've done stuff like this in the past um <clears throat> and it's one of the things on lockdown i've been meaning to do it with uh, again, because I think I said on an old podcast, I uh, found some old um, hook baits that I'd made with a super high concentration of GLM. I want to say it was something just ridiculous, like 30 or 40% um, super high concentration. Um, and then I, what I did was I basically air dried them till they're little round bullets. You put them in the freezer uh, for a while. You take them out of the freezer and I put them in curing salt. Mm -hmm. They basically, as they as they thaw, they sort of their pores open up a little bit and they draw that salt in. Um, put them back in the freezer. So this is a a, 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 cure, a, a form of curing as well. Uh, put them back in the freezer. Uh, take them out straight back in the salt. Let them do the process. I've done that sort of three or four times, um, and then they've actually been sat in a pot of this uh, curing salt for uh, six. Six years, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so my plan, something similar to what you said, was to I was going to do something very similar. So basically, using the um, like the Nam Pla uh, fish sauce that we've spoke about many times, um, using that. So I was going to rehydrate them with that to a certain point, um, and then I was going to basically I was going to use just some because this is what I've got: pre-digested fish meal, um, some krill and some GLM powder and just like you say so basically <clears throat> I'm just hydrating them in that sauce and then you add a coating of the powder shake them about take them out let it dry again so it's all completely dry and then you go through the same process basically um, and the reason I was using that combination because uh, GLM is super sort of a attractive carp attractor uh, I was going to use the pre-digested fish meal because of the amino um, profile with it and it's super attractive and then i was going to use krill meal because uh, i've got it and i figured that if my hook baits <laughs> on the bottom krill meal super light um, and as that sort of starts breaking down in the water that's going to be putting up the aminos uh, from the pre-digested and the glm up through the water column 
Mm. Uh, so I guess a similar thing to what you've do, sort of doing. I mean, well, the yeah, the ingredients are totally different, but yeah, yeah, exactly. It sounds good, mate. It sounds good. What um, GLM are you using, dude? I mean, this is old. Oh, mm. full fat. You, I hope. I don't. You know, I don't even know. I don't think it is. See, mate. you I don't think it is. You got so. I, I like full fat. Full fat GLM is honestly where it's at. Forget the fucking mm -hmm. bait makers telling you that, oh no, the low fat is better. No, okay, it, 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 honestly it's not. But um, it doesn't last well. So the, the stuff that's got the full fat stuff will go rancid. So if yours is mm -hmm. full of fat, you probably shouldn't be using it. So you, oh, it's not gone rancid, mate. <clears throat> No. Yeah, it's probably it's probably a non-fat GLM then, which is mm -hmm. fine. Like, I'm not saying it's not attractive to fish. I'm just saying it's a cheap, inferior product that a lot of people will tell you is better, and it's fucking not. It's just much cheaper and easier for the uh, for the bait companies to source as well as stock and keep if they don't sell it quickly. So a lot of them will will spout on, or you know, um, the non-fat GLM is is better, and they would. No, it's not. You want the full fat stuff. This is something I'm quite emphatic about, having spent you know a lot of time messing with different GLMs. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I mean, I've used them both in the past, um, but no, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure this stuff is. Um, to be honest with you, it was bought from either A Bates or uh, AA Bates. Remember them? Yeah, still or, going. Yeah, or CC more, and I don't think at the time either of those guys were doing the full fat <coughs> GLM. I don't know if they are now or not. I, I used to get it from Bill Cottam, and it was fucking expensive. <laughs> um, I used to get it from um, <coughs> Feedstim. Oh, did you? Mm. Ah, that's well, that's where I get my uh, full fat GLM from now, and it's 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 pretty good stuff. But essentially, that's a sort of a, a similar curing process. Presumably, um, with the, the coating of the uh, of the liquid, and then your powder coating, and let that dry, so it sort of forms like a hard shell around the bait, and then you put on another layer, and another layer. Is that essentially the process you're sort of going through? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Without going into but, it too but much. You can't, yeah. Super secret uh, store. Yeah, I know. It's mates. Don't ask me because it's just going to piss people off. Yes, yeah, sort of. But I'm going into um, carbohydrates, uh, sugars, and enzymes. No, cool. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Moving on, mate. Moving on. Mm. I, don't, I don't know what our next little topic is going to be. Well, I mean, we. Uh, do you know what? This was a real impromptu uh, podcast, wasn't it? We didn't plan to do it. Um, I was fishing. I was no. like, oh, I've got good signal. Do you want to do a call in and we'll just do a podcast? We had it in our mind that we were going to do a bait podcast because... A lot of people have been asking for it, and we just we keep saying that we'll do it, but we haven't. Um, so we're not really organised. But I tell you what, Pete, <clears throat> and I'm not organised for this, but quite a few people have asked questions about mm. about bait. So maybe I could just go onto Instagram and have a look um, with the questions. Um, bum bum bum. How about that? A good idea. Yeah, no, cool. I'm up for that, definitely. Um, so, cool. While you're looking, is there? There's a like a residential side to the lake, isn't there? So is that on the opposite sort of side to the lake where you are? The lake I'm fishing. Mm. Yeah, well, it's 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 like an odd shape. It's not like a perfect oval or round or anything. Um, but the yeah, okay. the residential, yeah, that I can see houses from here. Yeah. Is it quite sort of like well lit, or are you sort of? Surrounded in darkness. Uh, it's I'm just trying to sort of get an image. Oh no, there's no street. There's no street lights here. But I tell you what, actually, I should mention this. I did a you. Do you remember our last on the bank special? You forgot your your head torch. Yep. Forgot my head torch, didn't I? Yep. <laughs> It's annoying, isn't it? <laughs> really annoying. <laughs> like you rely on that. Yeah, you do. You do. <laughs> um, I've got. I, I've bought a spare. Have you? Oh. God, I don't even know where it is. That was it. Mine went missing, mate. That's what happened to me. And then I ended up buying another one. And uh, typically, like the day it came in the post, I found my original one. So mm -hmm. I've always got a spare. I always buy rechargeable now as well because I take a little power bank uh, fishing. And if anything sort of runs out of battery, it's just so much easier if you just recharge stuff. 
Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I just bought a new power bank, actually. Um. <laughs> There's one in Lidl's the other week. It was like 40 quid or something, but you could like jump start your car with it. Oh my god, really? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that big, to be honest. You'd think it'd be huge, wouldn't you? Like a mm. car battery sort of size. But yeah. yeah, it came with a little like jump start kit. You could recharge your phone like a hundred times or something. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah, I just got like a smaller one. I've got two. Um, it's like, it's 26,000... MAH is it? I don't know what it is. You'll probably that's, know. That's quite a, that's quite a small one, isn't it? Uh, well, it'll do. <clears throat> I, th oh. I think it'll do an iPhone about seven or eight times. Yeah, that's not a small one. Sorry, I was thinking like two thousand six hundred. No, mate. No. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, I found a question, but my fucking battery needs changing again, mate. You there? <laughs> Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, and this is the last battery. So it's going to be a short podcast, mate. Oh, we'll have over an hour, mate. That's fine, isn't it? I think so. I think so. This is very much, I think, an intro debate. Don't you? <laughs> yeah. Right, so I have got a question from Daniel Bird. Um, and by the way, guys, uh, my battery is running low, so this just might cut out, and this is my last battery. Um, it might just cut out. But anyway, we've got a question from Daniel Bird. Uh, Daniel's part, hi there, I have just finished listening to all your podcasts, and it sparked off my interest in the liquid side of carp fishing, which I've been overlooking. I have ordered some of the fish sauce that you rec recommended to try. Uh, that is the squid band fish sauce, I think he's on about, that we mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to some imitation baits which I've used on the lakes I fish because of bad crayfish problems, I feel you brother, I'm, I'm with you right now. Um, is there another liquid you could recommend to go with fish sauce to boost attraction to the fake baits? Uh, stay safe and keep up with the very good podcasts, Daniel Bird. Thank you so much for that question, Daniel. Uh, and there's going to be some other people that have asked questions, and I've just lost them in, in my many, many DMs on Instagram, so I apologise about that. Uh, I'll get to them if I can. But yeah, Daniel, um, for sure, I would always mix liquids. So that Squid Brand fish sauce um, is a very good liquid. It's a very uh, light, thin liquid. Um which is great, it, it, that has its purposes for sure. I like to, it depends what application it is for, I like to mix that with a heavier liquid for, for many purposes. If I was just rehydrating baits, for example, then that, that very um, thin liquid is great. Um, but generally, I like to, to mix it with other things. What you'll find as well, and I've said this several times before, a liquid, liquids are phenomenal. They're very attractive to carp, provided they're the right liquid. Um, but they generally, all of them work better if they're used in a mix. So you want a few different liquids together. I, I guarantee you'll get way more mileage out of it that way. Um, so I would mix the squid brand fish sauce um, with something a lot thicker and heavier. Um, I like Salmigo, um, which is a, a salmon hydro. Salmon hydrolate, uh, hydrolysate, sorry. Um, so I would probably mix it with that and, and you could put another dimension in there and mix it with some active CSL. Um, that's a good mix. I, I, I've used used that mix a lot. <clears throat> um, I like I like fishing with nuts. I, I'm often preparing and doing different things with my nuts. Um, and uh, yeah, that's quite a nice mix I like on there. I mean, I do like fermenting my nuts, to be honest with you. Um, but if I wasn't doing that, um, that's a good mix. Uh, so that's the squid branch fish sauce, um, some salmigo, which is a fish hydroslate, uh, hydrolysate. Um, I keep saying hydroslate because that's what you say, Pete, but it's actually hydrolysate. Uh, I always say hydroslate. I know you do. It annoys me. It's like, it's hydrolysate. But anyway... Um, yeah, so squid brown fish sauce, uh, uh, salmigo, which is a salmon hydrolysate, and active CSL. That is a very good combo. Um, but the sky's the limit. Like, experiment and, and find. It's always good to get uh, the nod and a bit of info from someone who's like tried it and, and found it 
you know to be very effective of course that gives you confidence doesn't it but there's nothing like putting your own little mixes together and finding out oh wow if i add this aspect to x it does so much better that that's so exciting so those of you listening you know don't be afraid to experiment um and you'll you'll get more knowledge and you'll get more confidence and you'll start to kind of look at different ingredients and new ingredients come on the market all the time you'll look at them and be like okay well that will probably go well with that because of x y and z uh like it could be uh, going back to the um hexanoic acids or different carbolic silic acids uh okay that might go well with this new cheese powder um because that will contain some butyric in it or whatever you can kind of piece things together as you get more knowledge but just go and experiment ultimately no one really freaking knows until you put it in the water and see the carp's reaction uh i'm lucky i've got a place not very far from me at all where i can go and feed carp um find somewhere like that or just go out fishing with it make up your own mixes but yeah anyway dude um Daniel Bird, I would I would recommend that mix. Um, yeah, let us know how you get on, Pete. What what just to jump in on that? Yeah, yeah. What would you recommend, Pete? So he talks about like the fish sauce. Um, I like you've you've touched on it as well. Uh, I've actually used a lot of powders with it to mix in because it's so uh, viscous. It's super thin, isn't it? Um, mm -hmm. So I've actually used it uh, in the past with like a powdered balacan. Um, I've used it with powdered pelican uh, and cheese powder at the same time and with I can't remember what there was another thing I used to mix with it and it will come to me I've been thinking it's been in my head the whole time you've been talking um, but yeah it's um, you don't necessarily have to always mix liquids um, use super like soluble powders um, especially with a liquid like that you could you can add some some powder to it to sort of thicken it up a little bit it's not going to harm um, but yeah, I used to use it with a, like a blue cheese powder, um, and powdered balacan as well. Um, cause at the end of the day, it's just fermented shrimp, isn't it? It's super salty. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's part of its big attraction. Uh, it's the, the saltiness of it. Um, yeah, but yeah, mixed with powders, um, don't always have to sort of combine liquids together. Yeah, absolutely. Really good point, Pete. <clears throat> and we tend to get con get conditioned, don't we? It's like, okay, well, what liquid could add to this liquid? Um, but you're absolutely right, mate. You know, n nothing wrong with putting a powder in there. Um, Especially if you're rehydrating baits, and it's actually a good way of getting that powdered additive. You dissolve it, especially if it's, it's got to be a soluble. Something like LT94 isn't so soluble. You're not going to do a great job. Uh, but if you get a soluble powder, you can put it into that liquid and rehydrate a bait. I think it's quite a quite a good edge. Yeah, absolutely, mate. And I think I put a, well, I know I put a little video on Instagram ages ago. You can also, you, you, say if it's um, just some like feed baits or whatever, you can put liquid on and then put powder on, dry it out. Like, you know, you can do all different kinds of things, can't you, with liquids and powders. Um, and you can form like a, get get your baits wet and then, you know, not sopping wet, but fairly wet and then put a lot of uh, powder on and form like a, like a crust on the skin of the the boily um that's sort of what i was explaining earlier with yeah curing. yeah um, we're, we're going at that from different angles to be honest yeah completely but i mean yeah yours sounds awesome mate i'm I've no doubt it'll do you very well uh you know <laughs> that was sam's way of saying yeah mine's so much better no that was my way of saying like <laughs> i, I it's very different but i don't want it to sound like i'm being some elitist dickhead and saying oh it's very different mine's very different mine's better no it's i'm sure it's not better probably mine's way more complicated yours will probably catch more <laughs> that's the way it'll go i bet yeah yeah quite possibly who knows um have you got any more questions no i can't find them i've actually started Fuck yeah, no. i know i've actually started replying to a client now uh, it's really bad this is the problem mate I, I find it so hard to switch off from work um i tell you what we get a hell of a lot of people just messaging us just to say really enjoy the laid-back nature of your podcast and it's just two mates chatting um and so many like every other message nearly or it feels like that it probably isn't that but it feels like that they're saying can't wait for the bait chat all right looking forward to the bait <laughs> chat you get that as well pete 
yeah i mean we get a lot a lot less traffic but from what i pick up through facebook and stuff yeah yeah um exactly the same people like her people like it like you say it's 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 sort of laid back to you guys chatting um but people want to know about the bait, don't they? But we're never organised. We always talk about we need to do a bait episode. And we're like, yeah, yeah. And then it's like off the cuff tonight. <laughs> it's like we're just not ready for it. No. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, I mean, let this be like a little bit of an introduction to a bait episode. Um, and we can we can do one that's, that's much more in depth. Um, yeah, we could, I mean... I don't know what I don't know what you guys want. Like, let us know what you want. You all want to know about bait. You want to listen to bait stuff. Let us know what you want to listen to. I mean, I can give you some old recipes. I'd 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 be happy with doing that, Pete. Not what I'm using now, but I'll give you some old recipes that have worked like phenomenally well. I'm sure Pete would be happy with that as well, wouldn't you, Pete? Share mm -hmm. some of your own. Yeah, hundred. 100%. Yeah, we can share recipes, we can give advice. I mean, I suppose, yeah, just, just reach out and let us know specifically what you want to know. Um, I'll be honest, a lot of, I, I buy my boilies now. Um, I make my own hook baits and I do lots of funky stuff with particles. Um, I say lots of funky stuff, just the general kind of fermenting particles, like my, my tiger nuts. Uh, I like to leave them, you know, ferment them for five odd days, depends on how warm it is, you know, j just that kind of stuff. Um, adding sugar to them, nothing too fancy, but yeah, that that's the extent of my bait. Look, I'm by no means a guru, Pete's by no means a guru, um, but we've made bait for many years and we kind of got our own ideas on it and uh and uh yeah we, we're passionate about talking about it so let us know what you want us to talk about and if you want to leave us a review it's always much appreciated <laughs> that's it i think that's probably a good time to round up is it sam i think your battery's on the blink isn't it yeah my battery is gonna just and believe it or not, that is exactly when my battery did run out. Um, I just wanted to, to come and round off the episode, really. Uh, obviously, this is Sam. I'm back in my studio now. Um, and to touch upon that last question that we answered, um, since I've just gone through and edited it, I actually realized um, that the chap was specifically asking about liquids to add to fake baits. Um, which I didn't pick up on at the time, even though I read out the question. Apologies about that. My answer would change a little bit. Um, I think a lot of these, you know, what we'd call food liquids, um, like the Salmigo that I mentioned and Active CSL and all those kind of things, they're, they're phenomenal. They're fantastic. I'm not convinced on how well they take to fake baits. Um, so I'm... As you probably tell from that, could tell from that um, that podcast episode that you've just listened to, I'm fishing a water where the craze are an absolute nightmare, and I've had a session since the one that we recorded the podcast on, and I'm uh, I'm having a hard time with the craze, even with some fake baits, some fake baits they just destroy. Um, so what I'm doing, rather than just fishing a bare old bit of plastic, um, which I know catches fish, but I just don't have confidence in, what I'm actually doing is at the moment I'm soaking it in something that I would deem would get into the plastic a little bit more than, say, a food bait would. Um, and at the moment, and it's definitely not ideal, but at the moment I'm using Betalin uh, by Hinders. Um, uh, Essential Baits do a one that's very similar, Thormatin B. It's basically Talin sweetener with Betaine added. Um, that's what I'm using at the moment. It's not perfect for a single, it's a great ingredient if you want to knock up some hook baits or some pop-ups or something like that, but as a, just a pure soak, I mean, it will catch fish. And in fact, I have caught a fish, um, from that venue that I was fishing on this, but it's not ideal. I think some fish will really shy away from it. Um, I mean, all you really need to do is for that carp to pick it up. To, uh, to examine it in its mouth, so to speak. Oftentimes it's enough for that, but I think it, it's because it's so strong and concentrated, I think um, there's some carp, you know, they're all different, that would not pick it up, that would not take it. So I'm not happy using it, but I'm using it at the moment because it gives me more confidence than just a plain flavorless bit of plastic would. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to, to clarify that. Um, 
to the chap that asked the question yeah i'm certainly not going down the route of just soaking my plastic balls in feed bait i'm uh, i'm using the beetle in i am on the lookout for something better so if i find something then uh, that 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 works well and isn't you know putting some carp off i will come back on and i will let you all know i'll tell you all um and in the same respect if anyone listening has got a little trick up their sleeve with this um a liquid that that does take to the plastics very well and it keeps on leaching out after you know many hours of being in the water please let me know um if you'd rather i didn't mention it on the podcast i totally understand that i'll keep it confidential or if you're happy for everyone to to learn then then that's great um please just uh, get in contact with me on instagram you can find us on instagram carpangler chronicles podcast and shoot me a dm i'll get back to you as soon as possible so that is it for this episode we have some more episodes coming up um we actually had quite a few you know, quote unquote named anglers up our sleeve um a few of them have not let us down but but not managed to uh come on just because they're very busy obviously everyone's very busy at the moment so they'll be coming on probably in the near future um i have a lesser lesser known guy uh, lined up to come on as well uh tommy bish tommy bishop i think his full name is um he's just someone that i've come across on instagram I absolutely love his stuff and i think he'll just be a really interesting guest so he'll be coming on in the near future um got a few other bits and pieces as well and aside from that um i think me and pete are going to meet up and do a social episode where it'll be me and him fishing together two meters apart what with the, the current uh covid19 guidelines And we'll do a live podcast, which will be a first for us, where we're actually both sat next to each other. Um, And in fact, I think that'll be the first time I've seen Pete for probably about five years, six years. Um, So that'll be a a good episode worth tuning into. I'm not sure what we'll talk about. I'm sure we'll get into the depths of of carp angling and we're going to be fishing whilst we do it. So I'm sure we'll be talking about how we're tackling that venue and just talking about general carpy stuff. Um, there'll probably be a few beers involved so expect that to be a potentially interesting episode Um, so yeah lots more different stuff coming but I'd also like to know what you guys you the listeners want to actually listen to Um, I'm always open to suggestions uh, obviously so is Pete as well so please get in contact let us know what it is you'd like to hear us chat about or maybe who you want to hear us get on the the podcast and and quiz um we're very very open to suggestions so don't be afraid to reach out and uh and uh share what you'd like to hear as well as that the reviews really do help some of you have been kind enough to leave a review on the apple uh podcast app for those of you that are on apple we would really appreciate you taking the time to do that it massively helps us and it's really nice to hear what you write as well for those of you not on the apple podcast or or those of you without an iphone or ipad um i don't think you can actually leave us a review which seems very silly um but um you know thank you for listening anyway um but yeah for those of you on apple if you could leave us a review we'd really really appreciate it Uh, And it will obviously keep us motivated to keep these coming. We don't want to keep doing these if actually no one's really listening and no one's really enjoying them. Um, So it's, it's great to get feedback in that respect. That is it for this episode. I hope to get another one of these rolled out very, very soon. I imagine, wow, it. what's the date today? It is the 8th of June today. I imagine I'll publish this. Um, in a day or so might even do it tonight actually and then i hope to get another one out in june as well and um, just increase the frequency of these podcasts um, because i realize we've been a bit quiet so apologies about that but anyway that is it for now i hope you've enjoyed this i hope you're all staying safe i hope your family is safe and you're all well and i hope life is returning back to normality um, for you a little bit more than it has been in recent months during the lockdown so take care everyone and bye-bye